Hello and welcome to our live masterclass sessions here from Change in Education. My name is Amos Madra, I'm a careers advisor here at Change in Education. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you, the student, to get an insight in the world of work. So last week we had great, we had a great reaction from yourselves. Uh, so please, if we can continue that again this week, that'd be fantastic. So what I'd like for you to do is get your questions in, in the comments, we'll keep an eye on them and we'll be sure to get them to our guest today, who is Matt Jenkinson, who's a fully qualified and highly experienced chartered physiotherapist. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what that is. We'll find out very shortly. With over 20 years of experience, he has worked as a head physiotherapist in football and rugby super league with some of the biggest high profile teams um, you can imagine uh, in occupational health at Jaguar Land Rover that sounds exciting we'll find out more as a case manager and in private practice and community physiotherapy how exciting is that Matt a warm welcome to you how are you doing thank you for joining us thank you no problem good to be here yeah I'm doing well thank you great fantastic so Lots of stuff that you've done from football clubs to rugby clubs yeah. to Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, I mean, that one, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, like most things, by accident, really. Um, I just come out of um, rugby league, I think. The sort of nearly 20 years of, of elite sport, I'd, I'd sort of had enough of that because. Uh, as you can imagine, very long hours, takes up your weekends. Um, I was knocking on a bit and thinking about starting a family. So it was it was, it was was about time, really. Um, and I'd worked privately, but I just wanted a new challenge, really, and, and was looking around and, and saw this opportunity come up and thought that it was, it was pretty good, really, because it was physiotherapy, but not what I'd been traditionally used to. So it was more... Um, kind of health management stuff as well. Um, so taking the the sort of uh, the Jaguar Land Rover workers and um, if they were off sick or they'd had operations or they were injured or they'd been, uh, you know, had repetitive strain injuries on the job, it was, it was sort of managing them basically. So it could have been anything from managing sickness absence um, to obviously physiotherapy treatment as well to help people back into work or to help them. It was, it was pretty varied really. Yeah, and I can imagine in that sort of uh, industry there would be a lot of repetitive strain injury. Absolutely, yeah. Production yeah. line sort of work is is quite um, obviously monotonous and quite sort of um, quite sort of heavy and fast paced because it's just continuous. Um, uh, they do have breaks and they are supposed to rotate the jobs, but a lot of them get stuck on the same sort of same job and the same sort of side of the car. And it sounds stupid because it's things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Um, but if you're doing sort of the same thing eight hours a day, every day, it can it can add up because I think they made 300 cars a day. Um, wow. Or was it 300 an hour? I might have been 300 an hour, actually. I was, yeah, it was a lot <laughs> anyway that they were sort of working on. Yeah. So from football to rugby, I mean, some big teams, Sale Sharks, I believe, was one of them. Um, we shared a stadium it, with Sale, yeah. yeah I was, I was with Salford Reds, yeah. Right. Um, so rugby is a bit more, a bit more high collision than sort mm. of rugby union. Rugby unions, um, just as just as dynamic and just as hard but rugby league was a bit faster um so a lot more high paced collision sort of stuff so lots of trauma um lots of on field um lots of on field trauma management and immediate sort of um life saving kind of things because you had to we had to renew a license to to be able to run on the pitch every two years so it was like um, advanced advanced life support so first aid plus really and I mean, from that, of course, you said that, you know, you wanted to change your scene. Um, for most people watching, um, you know, it's like one of the most exciting things. Of course it is. You must have really wanted to get out of there for you to have wanted to leave that. Because I can imagine a lot of people watching will be thinking, I'd love to do that. I'd love to get into that I think, Do you know what? I think that that's the, that's the general impression. And I think that's what I had first, because you look at it as kind of a fan, whether it's a football fan or a rugby fan and think, oh, that must be amazing but it's work it's it's still work at the end of the day yes it's quite nice but it's not as glamorous as you as you might think when you sort of leave in the stadium at midnight after a <laughs> after a Friday night game and you you sort of um you know you've had someone in the treatment room who you're waiting to do a drugs test and th there's loads of stuff it was it was fantastic um 
but I think it was just time, just time for a, a change of scene, really, and just time to experience something else. But it, it was, yeah, it was amazing. I can't, I can't recommend it highly enough as a, as an avenue being a physio. It's, um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. So um, in the introduction, I mentioned you've got over 20 years of experience. Um, can you tell me how you've got into your current role? Yeah, of course. Um, we've sort of set up our own business. So myself and my partner, who's a yoga teacher, um, we'd we'd done some workshops together and a lot of the things cross over because we're we're trying to encourage people to live healthier lives and and yoga and nutrition is is Ruth's um Ruth's side of the business. And there were lots of crossovers and we just decided to go for it really. It, it became um I'd left Jaguar and I thought, well, if I don't do it now. I won't, I won't do it basically. And, um, sort of getting into my forties, it was time to time to work for yourself rather than someone else really. And try and do healthcare as we, uh, as we would like to do it and, and how we think it should be done really. Yeah. And it takes, you know, it's a bold step to do that, but I suppose you believe it was the right thing to do and, uh, it's been successful, very successful and uh, it continues to grow. Um, so we've got a few questions coming in already. Guys, Fantastic. get your questions in on YouTube. Um, we've got these questions that came in via our LinkedIn page. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple here to go through. Um, the first one is from Aisha, who's asking, is it okay to not know what to do as a career? Uh, Aisha that's a great question yeah absolutely Um, as we said at the start I think I fell into it really because um, like like most young boys I had the 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 dream of being a footballer Um, I was playing a very high level of football and cricket I wanted to be a footballer quickly sort of realized by 18 it wasn't really going to happen and then was lost for a little bit. Was really lost because obviously when when you're at school, you 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 go down your careers route, and no no one really knows. You just you express an interest, and I think I expressed an interest in the law. Um, so I, when I left when I left college, I I had a year as a trainee barrister's clerk, um, and then sort of the work was fascinating. But then more and more, I started to drift back towards wanting to be sporty and active. So yeah, I, I think you find out when you find out. I mean, it's you don't want to put your eggs in or all your eggs in one basket because try things, try things, try things that you're passionate about, try things that you're interested in, and you'll either fall into the right place where you you love being straight away, um, or you may like it for a short time, but experience as much as you can and, and speak to as many people and try as many things not everything's for you and it's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with actually saying no I, I don't want to do that or that isn't for me because that takes you closer to where to where you do want to be yeah that's good advice would you say try and fail as quickly as you can so that you can kind of figure out what you like and what you don't like yeah, I think I know it's a bit of a cliche, but everyone sort of says, "Oh, if you, if you, if you, if you kind of do what you love, then it, it's not like work, and you'll never work a day in your life." And if you if you like being sociable, we'll look at a, look at a job that will allow that to happen, um, or we'll we'll hone those skills and and sort of as you're growing up, you learn you learn kind of what you like, but also what sort of skills that you have as well. And if you're a people person um, and, and and explore that, explore however many careers possibilities that actually um, celebrate what, what you are as a person. Yeah. Does it feel like work what you do or do you Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> it depends. I would say more the paperwork does, um, <laughs> the notes and everything, but I, I, I joke with I joke with clients. I joke with patients that I, I get paid to talk and listen for a, for a living, um, and we get to be active as well. So yeah. it sort of ticks a lot of boxes, really. But yeah, it's um, it, it's nice. But yeah, we don't always know sort of, and, and there's no there's no set age that we have to decide by. I, I treated someone a while back, and he'd been a barrister, he'd been a business owner, he was training to be a physio at the time, and he was in his forties, I think, to train. So th- there are opportunities there to change and to try things. Yeah, we've got some questions coming in on YouTube. Um, Mariah's asking, what route would you take if you want to be a fitness trainer? 
Great question. Um, there are lots of lots of routes. Um, make sure that the company is reputable because there's a lot of a lot of fitness trainer sort of courses that are sort of six weeks, and then you're left to your own devices, and it can be a bit. Whoa, this is this is a bit in at the deep end. But look for a company that will train you and mentor you. Um, I've got a few friends who are in that business, so if if um, if Amos, if you want to take some details, I can I can probably send you some details, and you can speak to people in that industry. They'd be more than happy to sort of guide you. Um, so yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I've got some more questions coming for you. You okay there? Yeah, your, your link's still there. That'd yeah, yeah, be great. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Okay, um, I've got more questions coming in. Um, what is your what, what's a typical day like for you? That was from uh, where is it? Who sent that question? I just saw that there. Uh, yeah, what is a typical day like for you? Oh, uh, is there is there such a thing? Um, <laughs> so the the clients that we work with a lot at the moment, where the clinic we have is based at a gym. Um, so there are a lot of um, people into the fitness, still deal with professional athletes. So you could be sort of seeing someone who has maybe got a long term health condition like fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis and you might be sort of doing some pain coaching with them um getting them sort of managing their activity levels so they're not sort of making their condition worse there's a pool there so you can, we can be doing some hydrotherapy um we may be just treating someone up in the clinic so there can be some hands-on treatment uh you might be doing some occupational health reviews where you go out to someone's workplace and, and actually sort of analyze their job and and come up with to help their 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 particular issue uh so yeah wide and varied really um similar really similar to sort of sport assessing assessing your players assessing your patients sort of daily and seeing how they're getting on and tweaking their home program that they've got we might then be taking a client down into the gym with them to do a, a supervised rehab program um wide and varied really um you might be doing kind of health checks where you know you're doing um, a kind of a, a, a full assessment where you're um, taking a history, you'd be doing that with all your patients. So it's it is it's wide and varied, and you meet people from. I think the youngest person I've probably treated has been maybe seven or eight, and treated ninety odd year olds. So it's wide and varied from from very active people to not very active. So yeah, very 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 varied. So every day is pretty much different for you then. Can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to see a physiotherapist a few years ago and I think he just showed me one little technique and the difference it made. Yep. It was incredible. And mm. I was thinking, you know, what did it take for this person to get to the point that he's got to? And there's a lot of questions that are coming here yep. that relate to that. What qualifications and what does it take to do what you do? Uh, so initially I, as I said, I, I, I didn't really know. So I did the sort of wrong A levels, if you like, because, um, obviously if you can do like, um, some kind of human biology, um, qualification, that's always very useful to learn about how the body works and it's physiology. And because then that helps you with learning all of your anatomy. So, I then I went back to college part-time to do that and then, um, joined a degree program. So ended up doing um, two degrees in the end, but the, the chartered physio degree was part-time. Um, I did a sports injury degree first, but they were very, very similar. So you, you would spend the first year learning about anatomy and, and how the body structure is made up and how it works. And then you'd go through all of your, your kind of clinical techniques and your um, sort of injury assessments and health assessments and, and all of those kind of things, really. So it was a three year, three year degree program. And within that, you get work placements, which is how I ended up working in football, really, because you do some hospital placements. You do. Um, I ended up luckily enough working at a couple of football clubs as placements and was was sort of fascinated by that and wanted to um, pursue that really. So yeah, a three year degree program. And then um, the, there's various ongoing training sort of routes that you can do uh, depending if you, if you want to do research or you want to be, um, you know, academic or 
you might want to be more of a manual therapist. So there are various various kind of um, CPD trainings that you can go on and stuff. But yeah, the, the initial qualification is a, is a three-year BSc. Yeah. So um, like you said, you know, there are uh, various routes into it, whether it's through yep. university or even, you know, like you did, I think you made the m- most of everything really from <laughs> the academic side of it, but then also the practical side, connecting yep. with football clubs and, you know, going there and offering your support, which ultimately led to uh, you working with some um, really big clubs as well. So mm. it goes to show that, yes, it's great to put in the academic work, but you've also got to put in the practical side of things as well. Am I it's, right in it, saying that? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a practical job. Um, it's it's there, There's a bit of both because um, you've got to have a bit of a science background, which I didn't have. Um, so sort of did that catch up wise if you like um but yeah it, it's it's a very active job it's a very practical job and i think like with any job um one of my one of my lecturers um, and mentors sort of said it's like learning to drive a car you, you get a bit of paper at the end of it that says you can drive and you know the technical aspects and then you actually get out on the roads and you learn to drive them because it's completely different than passing a test which i think the first time you get a patient in front of you and, you, and you're on your own it's like Oh my good God! This doesn't this doesn't follow any textbooks, or this isn't um, this isn't what we were taught, and it, it rapidly makes you makes you learn and sort of ask questions, and so yeah, it's it's yeah, it's good. Yeah, prayers asking, um, what do you enjoy the most about what you do? Different, but I would say people. Um, it, it's you, you meet such a wide variety of people, and uh, I, I think I just. I like people. I like talking. I like listening, um, which is is huge for this job. And you just, you, yeah, you meet a, a whole variety of people, and people are fascinating, aren't they? It's um, <laughs> it's one of the interesting aspects. And that's important. You said, you know, you've got to be a people person, sociable, which goes a long way with this career. Um, yeah. We've got another question here. Uh, what are the biggest challenges that you face on the job? Oh, good question. Um, patient expectations sometimes if if someone's come up expecting you to fix them um and expecting that to be done very very quickly doesn't happen like that a hell of a lot i know amos you mentioned a technique that you were shown and that helped and sometimes that can that can be the case but if someone's got long-term health conditions and that it, it's more a commitment and you're you're trying to get sort of lifestyle changes rather than me doing something to someone and it magically fixing them because that doesn't happen really. So I think patient expectations can be a challenge. Um, Probably wanting to help too much as well sometimes because I think in whatever role you are, you can't be all things to all people. Um, And, and, but you learn as much from sort of failing with, with sort of conditions and people as you do with your successes sort of thing. If you, if you go away and analyze things. So I think it's, it's as equally challenging and rewarding, I think. Yeah. Good advice. Ellie's asking, how do you stay motivated? (laughs) Um, Good question. Um, It can be very frustrating sometimes and quite hard work because you're, you're in a community stuff you're facing a lot of social problems um, you know people might be very very highly stressed or anxious and the mental health might be sort of deteriorating with a lot of factors that you can't really help so at this at the moment obviously with covid and lockdowns there's a lot of social isolation um, there's financial pressures there's there's even we've had a few people who are struggling um, food wise and that's hard it's very emotional obviously we're people so it affects you on a, on a big level so that can be quite hard and to keep yourself motivated you've got to keep yourself practicing what you preach you've got to keep yourself active you've got to keep yourself reaching out to people when you need to um but you always get i suppose the success stories or the person that you you reach the person that you help on whether it's a simple thing whether it's on a deep personal level it's really rewarding and to get that sort of feeling and that feedback is 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 why we do it we want to help yeah it is again it's wanting to help people isn't it it's that yeah. desire and i think you know uh from the point when you realize that this is exactly what you wanted to do taking that bold step to start a business 
is it easy to start set up a business what's the what's the process in that yeah it's easy when you don't know what you're doing and you're not sure where to go and what do you just crack on and sort of learn as you go along but um I've been lucky enough to get some really good advice um some good mentors really lucky to find the place that we that we are everything kind of happened really organically and and I keep saying by accident or I fell into it obviously there's a there's a bit of design to it but I think when you're when you're moving towards something and you're asking questions and you want to do something you'll find a way and you'll find people that can help and are willing to help because if you reach out to people I suppose we all we all like to help and if you find the right people the right advice will follow so yeah it's it's, it's challenging but it's you, you're in charge of your own destiny sort of thing as well. So you can kind of set your own hours and, and it helps with a nice kind of family life balance as well. So it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's good, but challenging. And got another question here. Does hard work pay off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think again, if you're, if you're in a, if you're in a career that you're enjoying and that you'd like, and you've got a, you've got a deep seated why, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being in careers where you go, you know, go and do nine to five and you can leave the job there and that's it really. You're not really fussed. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a career where you're making a difference or you're you're actually helping, then a lot of the time it is hard work, but it doesn't seem it, if that makes sense, because you've got a you've got a reason why. Um so yeah, I think working hard, working smart, all of those kind of things. But yeah, th- there's working hard is always important because you get to practice your craft and you get to learn different things and and meet people but it's just putting yourself out there whatever 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 career you choose or whatever you sort of have an interest in put yourself out there ask questions find people who are doing it find people who because you'll find most people are quite willing to share their story and help where they can and if not signpost you somewhere else that, that might be able to help Again, networking there, isn't it? It's, you know, no man is on an island. It's good to have that connection. Um, Maya's asking, um, how's COVID affected your business? (laughs) Massively. Um, We were were able to stay open through all of the lockdowns. The first one we decided to close because there was so much conflicting advice. So we moved very quickly to to online. Um, So telehealth telephone support, video support, um, which actually worked really, really well. So there's a lot of aspects that we're, even when I hesitate to use the word normal because we don't know what it is, but when we're back to normal, um, we're still going to use a lot of online support and, and telephone support because what we found is that it's really useful for people because if you can reach people in the comfort of their own home, you get to see their life. You get to see any problems they may have. They're more comfortable if they have any anxiety or social anxiety, you, you might they might miss appointments, for example, because things happen. They might be feeling ill. They might not be wanting to go out. Whereas you can reach people. There's not the traveling time. So there's a lot of a lot of pluses to going online. And, and obviously there are some minuses. Um, you can't deal with everything that you can do face to face. Certainly, you can't do hands on treatment. Obviously. But I think ninety percent of the of the of the treatment you can do. So I think it's been good in widening people's expectations and knowledge about what physiotherapy is as well. Yeah, Beth was asking, um, do you get a lot of referrals and do you work with, say, occupational therapists? Or? We work not not directly with occupational therapists at the moment mm-hmm. with the business because we're we're sort of private, but we're. Uh, wanting to go down that route because I do some community work where we're part of a a community interest group. So we work with um, unemployed who have health conditions, helping them get back into work and also people who are maybe on sick leave or maybe in danger of going off sick or just struggling with the health in general and, and wanting to help there. So we work directly with occupational therapists there because the best you, you made a phrase a minute ago no man's an island and the best it, it, it's a bit of a cliche about having a multidisciplinary team but if you can if you can help you can't help everyone but someone else in your team might be able to it might be suitable that a psychologist sees them it might be suitable that your nutritionist sees them so it's it, it's very um individual care which is what what it should be really so yeah occupational therapists are amazing as well that's another um 
another fantastic sort of um, practical career as well. Um, what advice would you offer to your younger self? <laughs> Uh, if I'm being very materialistic and, and capitalism based, I'd say buy Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> if, it's, if it's to do with um, probably to chill out a little bit and not be so feel so pressured about having to make decisions at certain times and having to have it all figured out. And because if we're all honest, we haven't got it all figured out. We're we're finding our way. It's a journey. You can have a goal in mind, but it's it's the steps you take along that way that that's the fun stuff that's the the color to life you can because sometimes by heading towards a particular goal you might realize that that goal is not for you but it might open up other avenues because you you're sort of traveling a path and learning about yourself and things like that so yeah yeah that's <laughs> it uh, isn't it um what are your plans for the future good question um <laughs> Expanding the business, um, which seems to be going really well. We'd like to, because of the challenges faced with COVID and, and sort of long COVID and the symptoms that are coming from there, I think there's going to be a hell of a lot of pressure on a lot of social um, social medical kind of services and vet, so GPs are going to be swamped. Um, so actually kind of getting as much good information, good evidence-based medical information out to people and and reassuring them and letting them know that they can actually do more for themselves than they think they can and 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 actually helping them along with that really so yeah I think just just continuing that and then on a personal level just trying to be a trying to be a good dad um because I started late I've got a three-year-old boy so just I suppose trying to teach him to avoid the pitfalls I did, even though he's he'll find his own pitfalls as well. So that's it, isn't it? It's uh, part of the the circle of life, as they call it, isn't it? <laughs> so um, yeah, I think yeah. Sorry, just had a bit of a connection issue there. Sorry. Um, last question is: okay. How can people find uh, find out more about you? Uh, they can visit our website, uh, which is www.yourhealthroots.com. Um, they can drop me an email. Uh, I'll be quite happy to sort of answer any more questions if they drop me an email, um, either through the website or Matt, M-A-T-T, at your health. Just visit the website, kind of just um, drop me an email. Uh, any sort of other questions happy to uh, to share any experiences it's frozen yeah. I don't know you're back <laughs> yeah yeah sorry um, so you were saying um, via your website yep yeah uh, um, you get that so W yeah <laughs> We'll put the link on there. We'll put the link for you, for for your um, contact on our um, on our LinkedIn page, so that at least um, uh, students will be able to engage. But Matt, I just want to say thank you very much indeed for taking the time to sit down no and talk to us about your own journey and inspire us. You know, because there's so many people who can relate to what you've done, who would love to do what you're doing, by but by hearing it directly from you, it just makes things a bit clearer. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see the pathway in terms of getting into um, your career. So I just want to say thank you very much. And thank you for sharing those great experiences uh, that you went through. Um, so again, I just want to say thank you to you, the audience. You know, you guys have been fantastic. Um, engaging in uh, your virtual work experience this week you know lots of um of you getting involved in the activities and don't forget the hashtag is inspire future leaders get onto linkedin you know post something there inspire future leaders tug <laughs> tag uh, tag us into the post as well and uh, we'll we'll be sure to share that so i just want to say thank you uh, from matt and from myself thank you bye-bye cheers thank you